That's what you don't want to happen. Hello everybody, welcome back to Not Enough Projects. Today we're going to continue working on the 97 Dodge conversion van project. Today we're going to be pulling the transmission, so let's get to it. Last time we got the engine purring like a kitten, but we noticed that we had no Ford gears. We could only move forward if we were in the low gear. So the guy I bought it from was nice enough to tow it down to me because he lives a couple hours away. Unfortunately, I didn't realize until he got here that he used a tow dolly with the rear wheels down and with the drive shaft connected to the transmission. So I believe that is what is causing our issues. So we're gonna pull the transmission out, pop it apart and see what's going on. First things first, we need to move it over to the shop. Hmm. There it goes. Seems to be running quite well still. I think I mentioned last time the brake was not operating properly, didn't feel like. I can feel some vacuum assist, so I'm wondering if the drums or in the discs maybe are just rusty. So the poor braking performance is just from the rust being on the braking surfaces. I did notice, you can see I just put it in drive. It'll actually move forward a little bit. Well, maybe it doesn't want to anymore. But earlier, I was able to get it to move forward a few feet in drive, only if I backed up a certain amount before. So that's kind of an interesting problem, but we're gonna be figuring it out here soon, since we're pulling it anyways. You can see in low, it runs in drive, it's just fine. Pulling the transmission on this thing shouldn't be too bad. You see we have really great access to all the bell housing bolts and all the wiring harnesses, so I'm hoping it shouldn't take us too long. Let's get to it. Just for the ease of getting in and out under the van, I'm going to try to drive it up these ramps and low. So I'm going to set you guys down, start it up, and give it a try. You can see it seems to have plenty of oomph in first. It's not really slipping there, so that's good. I don't really trust ramps very much, so I'm going to throw some jack stands or something under. If it fell, it's high enough that I'm fine. I climb under there all the time with it unsupported. If it were to fall, it sits high enough that I'm not really worried. I climb under there with it not on jacks or anything all the time. It's just a little annoying to have to wiggle under the running boards. They sit a little low. All right, I'll be honest. I don't know what this Mickey Mouse setup is going to do if the ramps fail, but my jack stands are too short to actually support it properly. So I'm just figuring if it collapses, which is unlikely the stack of wood will catch it. And even if it were to fall, it's not that big of a deal. It sits really high up off the ground as it is. So, not too worried. Let's get to it. So unfortunately, there is no drain plug on this transmission. Otherwise, I would start off by draining the fluid. So because of that, I'm just gonna go straight to popping the drive shaft out, and then we'll put a pan under the output shaft so that we can catch all of the fluid that runs out. Now you do want to be aware that when you take the drive shaft out, the transmission park is no longer going to work. So I made sure to engage the parking brake fully and I also chalked the rear wheels just to keep it from rolling in any case. You also want to be aware that if you set the parking brake after you put the transmission in the park, there may be a lot of tension on the parking pole, which means it may be tricky to get the drive shaft out release from the yoke just because there'll be tension on it so what i did is i drove forward a little bit put the brake on then put the transmission in park and shut it off so this should come out easy and these strap bolts are three eighths it's also not a bad idea to mark the drive shaft and the yoke otherwise you may run into balancing issues but your mileage will vary I'm going to need to go grab a pry bar so I can pry this out of the yoke. Alright, here we go. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and take these straps out of the way. Now, one thing you certainly don't want to do is have the caps come off the U joints and lose all the needle bearings. That's a huge pain in the butt. Here we go, released. And you can see this cap actually did pop off. It's only pretty good, so I just set it back in there. It doesn't look like any of the needles came out of place, so we should be good. Now that we got this side free, I'm gonna make sure we got the pan under the output shaft, and I'm gonna pull the drive shaft out. Okay, now I'm gonna set the drive shaft down. You do want to make sure that the yoke, the transmission yoke on the drive shaft doesn't get scored or anything because it rides against a seal. You don't want any oil leaks from there. I think at this point I'm going to start disconnecting all of the wire harnesses and then we're also going to disconnect the trans cooler lines. Gonna need a pick for that one, that tab broke up. Looks like to get to this one, you gotta remove the trans cross member, which is coming. I've disconnected the battery. Let's go ahead and get the starter out of place. Well, it looks like we've got a clip holding on the trans cooler lines. We'll leave those on the line just so we know where it goes. And there's the starter. I'm gonna set it on the cross member so there's no stress on the cables. One thing I did notice is uh, check out the steering linkage. You think the steering might be a little sloppy? Definitely gonna be getting a new one of those. You see how bad it is, wow. That's the worst ball joint I've seen in a while. Let's look at some of the other bushings and stuff. Tire rod ends could do worth replacing. We'll see how they are. Control arm bushings actually don't look horrible. Slight cracking, but you know, you'd expect that. The shock bushings maybe. Maybe putting some new shocks in this thing. Everything else feels pretty tight. It's just the linkage that goes to the pivot arm. <laughs> that is bad. All right, let's continue on. All right, I do want to get the torque converter bolts next. So I think we're gonna pop off the engine to transmission supports fully. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the cover, the access cover. These are 7 16th. Okay, now that we have the cover off, we can go ahead and access the torque converter bolts. We're not going to be able to spin that over by hand. So I'm going to grab a socket that'll go into the crank pulley. Alright, I've got the inch and a quarter socket for the crank pulley bolt. Now we're going to spin the engine over. So that we can access all of the torque converter bolts. Spark plugs are all in, so it's building a fair amount of compression. There we go. That's the first one. It's like they're 9 sixteenths. Should be all of them. We're just going to go around a little bit more. Make sure we don't miss one. But I believe these only have four torque converter bolts. 
Yep. So that's all of those. Now we can continue just taking everything that connects from the body to the transmission off. Looks like for this, there's some tabs you squeeze and it pops out. So I'm gonna go grab some big pliers so we can do that. Here's the tabs, one on this side, one on the other. So I'm gonna squeeze that, see if we can pull it out. Okay, it's through, now we just need to release the actual shifter cable from the transmission. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver. Now we should be good to pull this all the way out. a little bit but we got there next we need the throttle position cable off it's gonna do a rinse and repeat on that let me show you guys how that one comes out you kind of see It just shoves right down that hole. So you just push up, pops right out. So, so wiring harness up there, you gotta disconnect. Look how much crap is falling out. Let's see this connector. Nope, I'm not even looking. You can see there's a connector right here. It just pries right out. And then there's another connector way up in there. You see how much garbage is falling out. It's got a little clip on it, I believe. Out it comes. Now the last wiring harness connection on this thing should be this sensor right here. But I will remove it when we get the cross motor out. So now let's get the trans cooler lines unbolted. And then we should be really close. We just need to get the bell housing bolts and the cross motor. Okay, so depending on how loose these things are, I might just be using this adjustable, which is not the recommended wrench, but if these aren't tight, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. These are tight, so I'm going to grab the right wrench so I don't round it out. Looks like it's a three quarter. You don't want the pan under. Also get this one way up here. It's also a three quarter. And off comes that line. Now both are free. Drip in a little bit. Ooh, yeah, the fluid come out of there is nasty. Burnt. As you'd expect. All right, I think we're ready to get the Transmission jack in place, then we can support it, pop off the cross member and also all of the bell housing bolts, slide it right out and back. All right, we're back up top so that we can get the bell housing bolts out. There's also a wiring harness connection. You can see that goes into the transmission. Just disconnects like this. I need a pick to help it out. I'm also gonna grab the wrench for the bell housing bolts. All right, these bell housing bolts are 9 16 The four bell housing bolts I can see from up here. It looks like there's a stud over here on the passenger side that's missing a nut. I think I mentioned earlier, this thing has a remanufactured transmission. So I don't know if that's intentionally missing or if it was just forgotten. And I see, oh, you know what? That actually looks like actually a bolt in front of the oil filter. So there's two more bolts that come in this way. Down on the bottom we're gonna have to get, but then I think we should be good. Let's look at a bill housing bolt way up in here. It's also not a 916, so it looks like it's a 5 8 maybe. Okay, oh, 5 8 it is. 
All right, so unfortunately it looks like for this side, we're gonna need to pop the oil filter back out, which is unfortunate, but gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, now we can access the bell housing bolt. Jeez, man, whew, I think it's on there. Gonna need the breaker bar, I think. Okay, that should be all the bell housing bolts. Let's get the oil filter back up and in. See how much oil I can spill. Oh man. Now my hands are all oily. Alright, now we get all the bell housing bolts out. The last thing is the bolt. Let me get over there. The bolt holding on the dipstick up here. Alright, I gotta go grab a ratchet. You have to figure out where it's affixed up top. All right, so the dipstick hooks into the head up here. Looks like it's a 916. All right, the battery died. I don't know how much caught from that last clip, but this is the bolt that was holding this up. Anyways, now we should be able to get back under and wrestle this out from the transmission. There we go. I had to bend the tab out a little bit. Push the dipstick up. There we are. Should be good to go there. Let's double check we got all the bell housing bolts. It's looking pretty good to me. Check the other side. I don't see any missed ones. So now I'm just gonna do a quick visual inspection. Make sure we don't have any other wire harness connections plugged in other than the one that's blocked by the cross member. And we're looking pretty good from what I can see. So I think we'll get the transmission jack under the pan, get the cross member off, and we should be good to pull it out. I'm just going to put a slight amount of pressure on the transmission, okay? Maybe even a little less than that. Just enough that the jack's doing something. And I think now I will go ahead and pop the cross member out. Looks like the crest member bolts are 9 16ths. on each side. I thought it was going to be a through bolt. Do this side first. Obviously don't stick your head under unsupported loads. See a little bit of floor rust actually above the transmission. Might need to weld in a couple patch panels. All right, now that we have all the cross member bolts out, I think we can get this electrical connector off like that. And we should be good to try to remove it. All right, down what's hanging us up. Turns out this, whatever sensor this is, needs removed. I think this little silver cover is holding it on with these half inch bolts. And there's one. To get to this other one, we're going to need to remove this ground strap. Getting just slightly caught up on that bolt holding in whatever sensor that is. There we go. Now let's see what happens. Off it goes. Alright, let's lower the transmission jack back down and then pull it out. Oh, down 
here comes the starter. I think we're getting caught up on the O2 sensor for the cat. Might be able to finagle just around a little bit. I think I'm gonna need to just pop it out. I was just trying to unplug the O2 sensor there so that I could get the transmission to come down a little bit. That's what you don't want to happen. Awesome. Well, I'm not sure if it was obvious, but that is not actually the proper method of removing a transmission. Generally, you want it to stay on the transmission jack. Just as a rule of thumb. But well, now I have an Exxon Valdez style spill I gotta take care of, so let me get that cleaned up and I'll get back with you guys. Alright, well I've got the oil spill mostly cleaned up. I think what went wrong there is that the chain slipped out and also I'm just kind of an idiot and I was trying to maneuver a little bit too much without it being tight on here. And once the chain slipped out, psh, down came the transmission. You can see where it contacted the jack. The transmission housing itself looks totally fine. No problems there. I think that's where I'm going to call it for this episode. I'll go ahead and clean up the case, get it prepped for disassembly, and then next time we can tear it down and figure out what exactly went wrong. So thanks for watching, you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.